Welcome to the China Sourcing Academy course, where we dissect the biggest issues facing buyers sourcing direct from China, with tips to save you time, money, and fast-tracking your business. With your hosts, Mike Bellamy and Neil O'Connor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is these are probably the seven issues to look out for in thinking about. Okay, how's China going? In a macro sense, okay. Look, I'm not here to give you a prediction of what's going, what the growth will be in the next six months. All right, I'm here just to make you aware of. Okay, here are the big issues. All right, number one, the export. The, China is still dependent on exports to USA and Europe. Fortunately, USA is coming back. But it's not coming back fast enough. Like USA's growth depends on three things. Okay, number one, housing prices. You can write this down. Housing prices. Number two, consumer credit. Okay, and number three, real wages. Real wages. That means wages adjusted for inflation. Now let's have a look at these three things together. Housing prices. Yes, they've come back. Great. Okay, pretty bad five years ago, but. Housing prices have come back, so that's one out of the three. Tick. Second one, consumer credit. Yes, but not totally. Okay, only half. Real wages in the U.S. has not changed in the last 30 years. Okay, so there's a lot of talk out there. You know, U.S. is coming back and it's great, great, but it's only firing on one and a half of those three cylinders. All right. So there's a lot of talk about you know U.S. as a savior of getting the whole world going again. Well, I'm glad it's one and a half because when it was half five years ago, things weren't looking very good. All right. But so China is still dependent on that. What about Europe? Well, Europe still a lot of complexity. Europe has a similar issue that China has with. Let me t- let me give you the analogy. Okay. I'm not saying China. And Europe are the same politically, but in terms of the challenge of balancing different areas. So, China has the challenge of balancing the wealth on the eastern seaboard with the lesser wealth on the inland. Okay, and that's always going to be a case because the inland doesn't have an eastern seaboard. Not like in USA, there's one on the west and there's one on the east. All right, natural. You know, you can have that balance. San Francisco is strong in one way, and so is New York. All right, but China doesn't have that land, that seaboard on the other side. It has something like、uh, what you, on the eastern side, it's like Germany, and then you've got inland like Greece. So in Europe, what do they do? Well, they make everyone have the same currency, and then they allow mobility of labour. So what happens? Everyone from the Mediterranean. What do they do? They want to get to Germany. They want to get to France. They want to, they want to immigrate. They want to m- move, right? Okay. So same analogy for China. People on the inland want to go. How does China manage its flow of immigration? Like in Europe, there's free flow of immigration, which is a problem for Europe. So how does China manage the same? It has a hukou system, right? So yes, you can come to Shanghai and work temporarily, but you're not going to get health benefits. You're not going to get education benefits, and you might find accommodation, but you cannot get every. You cannot be treated like an ordinary resident. That's the hukou system, right? And so there's a lot of economists out there, a lot of people out there saying, you've got to disband this hukou system. You've got to allow the free movement of labour. All right, and then when you allow the free movement of labour, free. Immigration in China, like allow people to become resident in any city they like, you're going to cause problems in some ways, like infrastructure excess problems and things like that. But the benefit is, a lot of economists say, is oh, then you won't have to give subsidies to the West. So at the moment, the the way China is managing it, which is sometimes better than how Europe is managed, it is they have a hukou system, so they don't. Allow this free movement. They manage that. In response, they give heavy subsidies to the inland provinces. Okay, and that's how China manages it. I'm not saying it's better or worse. I'm just saying that's how it's how it's done.、Right.